Hello, and in this Commodore 64 demo peak video, we are going to look at bitmap vertical scrolling. Now, bitmap screens on the Commodore 64 have 10,000 bytes each. So it's actually quite a lot of work for just the CPU to scroll a bitmap. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. So now let's have a look at vertical scrolling for the bitmap because it's possible to scroll the bitmap screen vertically very quickly as well using a different Vic chip tweak, if you like. Uh, it's actually in part of the, the triangle uh, road of excess uh, demo mega demo. So I'm just skipping through the screens, which I'm not interested in until we get to the interesting screen. Bear with me for a second. So here we go. This is the screen that I was interested in. Just going to save a, a little snapshot just in case I want to uh, edit this later on. So this screen, you'll notice that there's a collection of sprites, I think, moving at moving around at the top of the screen. But we have this bitmap screen underneath and actually we can uh, control the, the speed of the bitmap screen scroll. But even without controlling the speed of the bitmap screen scroll, it's scrolling quite quickly. So we can see in the debug graphics map that the sprites are in the last bank. We're not really interested in the sprites. But it's what we're interested in is actually why and how this bitmap screen is rendering like this. Look. So one time, one scroll through the screen, look, the screen data in the memory is actually not scrolling, but it's scrolling on the Commodore 64's view. And we can see that actually it's progressively drawing the screen from top to bottom, from top to bottom, continuously as the screen scrolls up. And we can see that the um, King Tut mask there was offset. If I make it scroll really quickly, you can see that it scro can scroll really very quickly indeed. So now the screen data in the debug view is synch you know, it, it's not half and half, it's uh, centered properly. But then when it scrolls to the next screen, it's offset horizontally, and the next screen is offset horizontally, and this screen is offset horizontally, and then it re-synchronizes back again to uh, a properly centered screen from the point of view of the, the debug view. If I use the editing feature in this debug graphics map view here and fill it with some dots, you can see that the Commodore 64 is, is rendering these extra dots uh, quite happily as long as, they, as long as the colors aren't filled with black, then the pixels are showing up on the Commodore 64. So we can definitely see that it's actually the bitmap screen that we're looking at on the C64 view is actually correct in terms of the memory debug view. So how? How is this demo scrolling the bitmap screen vertically so quickly without shifting around all of that memory for the bitmap view? It's just rendering new rows. It's not shifting the whole thing. So let's have a look. Here we are back to that screen now, but in C64 debug GUI, we can definitely see again the sprites up at the top of the screen with some Y expansion going on as well, oh, which is rather strange. But yeah, we can definitely see the red bounding boxes for the sprites. But what we're really interested in is having a look at this in the Vic chip debugger with the cycle level debugging. And we'll move around the raster beam and then we'll see where the bad lines are. Now I've already enabled the bad lines, but it doesn't seem to be displaying the bad lines correctly in this debug view. But what we do have here, do you see that? What is it, that light bluish turquoise color growing there? This gives us a good hint about how this bitmap screen is being scrolled vertically. We are in illegal text mode at this point in time. Illegal text mode is where, so for example, uh, extended color mode 
uh, multicolor and uh, yeah, I think it's extended color mode and multicolor bits are enabled simultaneously, which is illegal. It cannot do that. So it turns off the, the video output circuitry, if you like, in the VIC, and it just renders uh, black, or it renders, I think it might render the background color or something like that. But anyway, it's useful for hiding certain areas of the screen that you don't want to be displayed because the pixels are a mess, for example, or you want to hide a, a Y scroll split um, if you're doing a character screen scroll, for example. But if we have a look at the uh, raster line debugging here, we can see that at this point in the screen, we are running certain instructions. So let's get to those certain instructions and then we can see what's going on. At this point in the raster line schedule, it is executing that jump instruction. Then it goes into these following instructions and I can see that it starts going into the interrupt here. And the code at EC85 is where the interrupt starts running the code. So we're incrementing D012, we are incrementing D019, loading accumulator with DD06, ending it with one, uh, branching and not equal to EC9C. I think that's detecting whether or not the interrupt uh, has been occurred. A certain type of interrupt has occurred. And then uh, the interrupt flag is cleared after that. And then we go into what looks like a no-op slide. These no-ops uh, just basically waste two cycles each until the real-time interrupt or raster interrupt comes along and then it hops into the real code. Now, we know then that the real code has started executing at a more accurate cycle period because all it's doing is that it's running no ops it's not running a music routine it's not running you know graphics updates or anything like that so the way that this interrupt then starts running the load accumulator the store the store is accurate to two cycles it's a useful technique for stabilizing your uh, raster interrupt so that you are definitely guaranteed to be running the code that you want at the correct cycle. So this starts off by uh, storing into D015 and then storing into D017. Uh, the sprites you can see here now are uh, Y expanded. It's running some no ops just to waste a little bit more time. It is then loading X and then storing X into D011 there. So depending on the value in the two uh, zero page memory there, it's just doing uh, a different branch on not equal. But basically now it's started doing that D011 store at that particular cycle in the raster line schedule there. Now this store to uh, D011 with F5, when it's done at that particular, uh, I think when it's done at that particular cycle in the raster line schedule, what it does is that it tells the VIC to start fetching um, a new uh, bad line. It sets the VIC into a new uh, bad line state uh, right at the end of when it's just finished um, rendering uh, the previous line. So the VIC is being told to start fetching uh, a new line. Again, please, just forcing it to start fetching a new line. We'll just debug this raster line schedule a little bit more by hopping through uh, uh, the cycles and having and noting down what registers, especially D011, which is the uh, VIC uh, vertical screen scroll register. So there we go. It's doing a deck D016. 
and then it's doing a store A with D011 again at that particular cycle position. And there we go. It's gone into the bad line state this time at that particular point. So it's not a bad line. And now it's done the store and it's saying, I want to go into a bad line state at exactly that point when it has finished. And there we go, it's changed. So this tells the Vic chip to start fetching uh, another character screen row or a bitmap screen uh, row and each row is eight pixels high. So the Vic chip then starts saying, well, I'm, I'm, I want to start displaying a new row of characters. So I better do my job of updating the VC base pointer there. So even after just processing uh, one pixel high uh, raster line, the Vic is being tricked into thinking that it should update the VC base pointer by 28 in hex, which is 40 in decimal. So the basically for one pixel horizontal row, the Vic has just thought that it should update or it should have rendered one whole character row already. So it's fetching the next character row, or rather it's updating the pointer or the offset for the next character row. And it's done it again at the end of the line at that particular cycle. So at that particular cycle position in the raster line, it basically adds on to eight in hex, which is 40 in decimal for each row that we want to consume or we want to update the offset. So basically by updating the offset for a whole character row, we're telling the Vic to discard entire character rows and then fetch the next one in the video matrix. So the VC base is continuously being forced down the screen much quicker than before. So that's how the Commodore 64 and the Vic chip in particular can be tricked into scrolling the bitmap screen much quicker than normal. Now this technique is called, it's called various different things, but uh, I've seen it most often called a line crunch. I think that's a very apt name because basically you are tricking the Vic into crunching an entire uh, eight pixel high character row into one pixel high raster line. So you're crunching the lines out of the screen. Now, because the Vic chip will, you know, as long as you let it render the entire screen from when you stop doing this line crunch, then this basically means that the VC base internal pointer will wrap around in its kilobyte memory space. Now a kilobyte or the VC base memory pages, if you like, is 1024 bytes and that is not exactly divisible by 40 in decimal or 0400 in, in hex is not exactly divisible by 28 in hex. So that's why you get this effect where the Vic chip cycles around this memory block, but the screen gets offset horizontally and then it comes back again, then it gets offset horizontally and then it comes back again. If we quickly have a look at a default Commodore 64 screen, how the Vic chip updates VC base, how the Vic chip updates its bad line state is that you can see the bad lines being rendered there because I've switched on the bad line mode in the debugger. But we can see that the VC base pointer is updated at the end of each uh, eight pixel high character row appropriately. So VC base is zero at this particular point and the Vic is in a bad line state and then at the end of the bad line Vic goes out of the bad line state it then renders the uh, eight raster lines so the eight pixel high characters and then we get to the next bad line state and VC base is updated with 28 so now 28 is 40 in decimal 
uh, that's 28 in hex. So that now we know that the VC base graphics data pointer has been updated to 40. For the next character row, the next 8x8 pixel high character row there, the default screen. So this demo effect was just basically compressing or line crunching the entire line. So thank you very much for watching these Commodore 64 Demo Peak videos. If you like this kind of deep technical dive into thick hardware tricks, or I might actually go into some SID tricks as well for demos. If you like this kind of stuff anyway, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel. And I really hope to catch you around next time. Have a great day or evening or night, wherever you are.